If you're a YouTuber, streamer, podcaster, doesn't really matter if you're putting content out on the internet, one of the most important parts and also the easiest to overlook is the audio quality. Uh, so today I'm going to show you how to set up a pretty quick, uh, easy, but powerful voice audio setup for uh, whatever kind of content you're putting out there. And it doesn't matter if you're using a cheap microphone on a headset or a dedicated compressor microphone. Uh, this is stuff that'll help with anything that you're using. You'll be downloading three programs. The first one is VST Host. VST Host lets you run VST plugins. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technologies. Uh, it's a software interface that lets you simulate real-world hardware audio that would probably cost you many thousands of dollars. So VST Host is the container program that lets you run these plugins. The second piece of software you'll be downloading is a set of VST plugins produced by Reaper. Reaper is a software audio program that's paid, uh, but they provide these VST plugins for free and we can use them inside of VST Host. I'll be sure to put links to all of the downloads in the video notes. The last piece of software you'll be downloading is Virtual Audio Cable. This is a uh, program that lets you simulate having an additional sound card inside of your computer, even though you didn't physically install one, and it's useful for routing audio signals to different places uh, from different programs. After installing Virtual Audio Cable, you'll see a new device under playback and recording in your uh, audio manager. The first thing you'll want to do in VST Host is set your input and output devices by going to the Wave dropdown, selecting your microphone as the input source, and the Virtual Audio Cable as the output. Now we can start using some of the VST plugins that we installed. If you go to File, Plugins, we'll start by adding a fur filter. This is a great way to automatically eliminate the frequencies causing the most background noise in your environment. Uh, you'll want to change the mode to subtract and then allow the filter to build its own profile. When you're done, uncheck the profile box and speak normally. You want to make sure that your voice is rising above the frequencies that you filtered out in the background. Next, we'll add a compressor, which is great for normalizing the volume of your voice, so when you speak very loudly, uh, the sound does not distort. The chain button on each plugin allows you to manage the order that each plugin is linked together. You want to make sure that there's only one line starting from your input, going to your output, and passing through each of your plugins. I won't go into too much detail here. You'll generally want the attack and release to be fairly low, under 100 milliseconds. The ratio controls how much your voice will be compressed when it reaches the threshold. You'll have to experiment with that to find a good setting that works for you. Finally, you'll want the threshold to be slightly above the normal level of your speaking voice, so the compressor won't kick in until you speak, start speaking much louder than normal. There's several other settings here that you can experiment with. I'm not going to talk about them right now, but we can uh, go into that in a future video. Next, we're going to add an equalizer, which will allow you to emphasize or de-emphasize certain frequencies in your speaking voice. Again, we'll fix the chaining of our devices, so there's only one path through from input to output. I can't tell you exactly what settings you should use in your equalizer. It's going to be different for everyone's voice. If you have a high nasally voice, you're going to want to boost some of the low end. Uh, and the opposite, if you have a very low voice that needs some presence or um, articulation. There's tons of guides on the internet for how to configure and set your EQ, depending on your voice. I'll try to link um, a good starting place in the notes. The last plugin we're going to add right now is a noise gate, which is very useful for making sure that your microphone does not kick in unless there's a certain level of noise, in other words, when you start speaking. This is really great for filtering out the sound of your keyboard or mouse, so your viewers don't hear those things when you're uh, making your video or streaming. Again, there's a lot of settings here to experiment with. 
but generally speaking, you'll want the attack uh, very fast, zero milliseconds, the hold and release around 20 to 50 milliseconds, and then you'll want to set your level for the gate somewhere a little bit below where your normal speaking voice lies. If you look at the master mixer window, you can see the difference between a high threshold and low threshold for the gate here. You can see the, uh, the background noise bleeding through when the threshold is very low. And then when we raise it just a little bit, all of that noise goes away. In OBS, in order to hear your new improved audio on your video or stream, you'll need to add a new output source, which will actually be the virtual audio cable input uh, that came from VST host after processing. The last thing you'll want to do is add a delay to your video. All of this audio processing adds latency depending on the buffer size. Uh, so you'll need to experiment. Generally, it's between um, a few milliseconds to half a second or more. And that's all there is to it. In about 30 minutes, you can pretty drastically increase the quality of audio, and it doesn't cost anything. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe. And be sure to check out my channel on Twitch, where I both play and make video games as Open Mailbox. Thanks.